G'day, John for the Hot End. Today I'm going to talk about my favourite prints that you can use in the kitchen. How do you like the fancy new set? Cool, eh? Anthony and his mate have been very busy making this just for you guys. It's actually very nice, I like it. Anyway, prints for the kitchen. If you have a look on Thingiverse, you will find many hundreds, maybe thousands of uh, items, different items that you can print that uh, you can supposedly use in the kitchen. Now, I had a look at uh, a lot of these items and I've printed a heap of them out here uh, just to show you uh, an example of what's available. But before I go any further, I'm going to let you in on some information. Um, about 12 years ago, I, I did a bit of a uh, career change and I decided to become a qualified chef. Now, I'm not sure what the criteria in the US or UK or anywhere else is to become a qualified chef. But in Australia, it's a three year indentured apprenticeship to a qualified chef. Um, and that involves going to school and, uh, and hands-on experience and what have you to, to become qualified. As part of that process, I also became qualified as what we call a food handling supervisor. And that involves the uh, handling, transporting and storage of various food items to government standards. So having said that, I believe I'm qualified to talk a little bit about these kitchen items. All right, let's get into it. Uh, some of the, uh, these items are printed in ABS, some are printed in PETG. And if you read all the stuff that's around the place, apparently uh, PETG is food safe and ABS is not food safe and blah, 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 blah. The truth of the matter is, as soon as you print something, anything, it is no longer food safe. It doesn't matter what you print it out of, it is not food safe. That's right, you can't see, smell, or taste bacteria hiding on contaminated foods. But they're there, just waiting. Samuel, Listeria, E. coli. The reason for that is the very nature of the 3D print, which is in layers and inherently has uh, minute gaps and little spots where things can hide. And the reason why is um, your normal uh, 3D normal 3D printer, your your FDM type printer, prints in layers. Now, no matter how good your printer is, and no matter how fine the layers are you are going to have gaps. Uh, they may be minute uh, and they may be just defects and not holes, but you are going to have little crevices where heebie-jeebies and germies and microbes and all sorts of things can hide. Now, some of these things that I've printed are usable and some are not. So we'll go through them one at a time for you. This one, is not a sex toy. This is a juicer, which I found. Now, it's quite large. It's for doing grapefruit and what have you. But Anthony will do a close-up there of you, but you will see all the ridges in the print. Um, and if you were juicing something with this, yep, fine, it would work. The juice would come out. Um, but then you have the problem of trying to clean it. So you'll see the, the, the layering and what have you on it. Now Anthony's got a microscope here and he'll show you a real close up of, of all the ridges and defects. Now, um, cleaning this after you've used it once would be a problem. Um, depending on what you print it with, you can't put it in the dishwasher, you can't put it in boiling water. So as far as I'm concerned, um, can you use this safely? We'll get back to that one. This one is a funnel. Uh, same deal. You could use it once for things like um, 
water or vinegar or wine or for something like that and it would probably clean okay something like that would be fine but if you put something protein or dairy through it like uh, milk or cream or something like that you are never going to get it clean we'll come back to that a cookie cutter same deal um, use it once sure cleaning it different story we'll come back to that a measuring cup the amount of little holes and gaps and crevices and things in there again cleaning it's a problem we'll come back to that that that's an offender that one this one is quite a simple looking thing and it's for um, taking leaves off uh, herbs and what have you or as you say in the US herbs you uh, you put the branch through the hole and pull it through and the leaves fall off pasta measure okay this is how it works get your pasta pull it out of the bag okay like so and you serving for one okay there we go goes through the hole serving for one okay that's that's the theory on that one and it's, it works it's fine that's good if you need that sort of thing uh, I'm able to judge without a measure but some people like a measure that's okay we'll just put all this back in the bag I feel like the Swedish chefs now Okay, this one, the egg separator, one hen's egg, one egg separator. Okay, so you break the egg into the egg separator. There we go, look at that, yum. So that's your egg separator, and in theory, the white goes through and the yolk stays inside. All right, there you go. Here's your white going through and the yolk stays inside, which is in cooking, if you know anything about cooking, you often need to separate eggs, all right? What is that? It's all right. What is that? What, what is that? What is that? Fuck off, will you? Fuck off. But this is not a cooking show, so that's how it works. Now, a little more detail in these things that I have here. The juicer, you could probably get that clean enough to reuse and anything that's left behind probably won't kill you and probably won't make you sick. So is this one usable? Yeah, I'd say this one's usable. Um, would I or do I use it? Hell no. The funnel. You could clean it if you used it for things like water or vinegar or wine or something like that. Probably clean it well enough to reuse it. Dry goods, you could probably use it for salt or rice or whatever. You could use it for that and clean it, reuse it, that'd be fine. Anything with, uh, with proteins like um, milk, cream, eggs, uh, meat products, anything like that, you would use it once and throw it away. Um, would I use this one? Yeah, I probably would. Uh, and I have used this one in my garage for, uh, for other things other than food. Would I use it for food? Uh, no, I don't. The leaf stripper for your herbs. Not a bad idea. I, I do it the old fashioned way, but this thing works. You could probably clean it well enough to reuse. Yeah, undecided on that one. We'll put that aside. The cookie cutter, you could clean it. There's a lot of little crevices and things in there. Bear in mind that the type of dough that you're using it with has probably got eggs and what have you in it. Um, you could probably clean it and reuse it and not get sick. Uh, would I use it? Uh, no. Right now I'm fine. But 10 days from now. <laughs> Measuring cup, same as the funnel. 
uh, depends what you're measuring with it. Dry stuff, yeah, not so bad. Sugar or salt or something like that. Water, wine, yep, yeah, not so bad. You could clean it up and reuse it. Anything protein, definitely not. Uh, would I use this? Um, no, I'd go down to the store and um, buy a proper one for like a dollar and make sure I'm not going to get sick. So would I use this one? No. Spaghetti measure. If I needed to be able to measure spaghetti, yes, I could use that. Spaghetti is dry. Yep, you could use that safely. Not a problem with that one. We'll come to this one. This one I never finished printing because I didn't see the point. But uh, especially you guys in the US are very fond of your hamburgers. So this supposedly is a hamburger press, which you put the meat in and you squish it down and there's a handle and, and such. A hamburger by its nature is meat. That means, ah uh, no. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Idiot sandwich what? An idiot sandwich, Jeff Rams. Definitely not. Anything to do with meat, particularly um, red meats, chickens, poultries, um, fish, anything like that, hell no. Don't use it. Please don't use it. My iPad stand, one of the first things I ever printed, and this is probably the most used thing in my kitchen. I stick it on the kitchen bench, put my iPad in it, and read off my recipes. I love it, I use it, I keep it. Great thing. Now, I hear you saying, oh, but if I printed in ABS, I could vapor smooth all my stuff. Or if I printed in PLA, I could sand it smooth and, and make it really, really nice. Um, no, no, definitely not. For a start, your vapor smoothing might look smooth, but I can guarantee you that it will still have cavities. The only way that you could use it, in my opinion, would be to coat it in something that is food safe, uh, like some sort of resin or some sort of uh, paint finish, something that is a food safe finish that is uh, going to completely seal the model so that it is washable. Now, by washable, I don't mean throwing it in your uh, kitchen sink with a bit of soap and, and uh, washing it that way. I'm talking washing as in being completely germ-free and microbe-free, which means really, really hot and with lots of uh, soap or chemicals. So whatever you use has got to stand up to all of that. That's about all I have to say about 3D printed items for the kitchen. Like I said, if you want to be safe, which most people do, I wouldn't use any of it, except for my iPad stand. Anything that's contacting food, I wouldn't use. Um, but it's up to you, you know, if, if you think you've got a constitution of an ox uh, and uh, microbes don't bother you, then by all means go ahead and use whatever you want. So now it's too late. So what happens? Well, depending on the bacteria, you're gonna experience some discomfort. For me, and in my experience, ah, uh, no thank you. Okay, that's all I've got for you this, for this video. We shall uh, see you on the next one. Don't forget if you like what uh, we're doing here and the set and everything else, and new lighting, new audio, the whole lot, give us a thumbs up, um, hit the subscribe button, uh, and the little bell and don't forget that we really really love to see you on our patreon list that would be great uh, and leave comments down below for by all means if you want to disagree with me if you think you know more about it than I do sure leave a comment or leave a thumbs down if you want but please don't leave a thumbs down by itself if you uh, if you don't like something let us know and uh, we can answer you or uh, perhaps make something better Okay, see you next time.